Hey, today we thought we'd tune in and talk about a really um, important topic, as you can see, and if you've been following us on Facebook, you know that I've been in the hospital for a few days, um, and there are some challenges when you're a couple, uh, when you're married and somebody's sick, or in the hospital, and what that does, and the things that you go through, and how you both deal Absolutely. with it. So we thought we'd down in a little bit, although it's not the best of circumstances, we'll try to make the best situation out of it. Um, it wasn't a question that was asked, but it is something that happens for all couples, um, whether you're married, living together, what have you. So um, we'll start from the beginning. First is, uh, I'll tell my part first, if you don't mind, just because it. it impacted me. I don't know who it impacted first, but she was saying, I was saying I don't feel good, and, she kept, and I kept prolonging it. And so finally I gave in. And we came into the hospital, and what I thought was going to be a simple tune-up uh, and then leave turned in now to a few days, and it's going to be a few more days. But the things that go through your mind, because you think something is simple, uh, I thought I came in for just dehydration, to be honest, and it is something beyond that that I never expected. Um, so first thing is I have a wonderful assistant, Ray Reese. Thank you so much because he noticed the change in my behavior first and was just like, you need to have it checked out. So I appreciate having people. So that's another one piece to add right, right there, having the right community around you who knows your behavior Absolutely. well enough that they can say something's not quite right. Um, second part of that is taking that advice when people who love you are telling you to go get it checked out, go get it checked out right. because it's the small thing leads to a lot of pain. Um, <laughs> so it's not been no fun. But let me tell you how it really has impacted me. Um, although I'm the one in here in some pain, what goes through my mind, particularly once they decided to keep me, was did I make, as, as a provider, did I make the right, have I made the right provisions? Um, and we've done that over the years, so we review ours. Um, annually and as, as big changes come up in our lives but or that events doesn't like this, yeah events it. like this happen and you reevaluate but it you first of all you got to have the right documentation in place um, and it's sad to say because nobody ever wants to talk about what happens when somebody gets sick and God forbid somebody dies but here's the reality both of those are going to happen absolutely and so when I was getting admitted and everything and they kept saying well do you have directives uh, who's take care of you, who can make decisions. Luckily for us, we've been in this hospital enough. I do have those things are on file here, but it brought up the topic for me and saying, you know what, I best, I'll, that's a good topic for us to talk about a little bit. Do, does people, do people recognize they need to have those things? And so um, making sure that I was covered in the event I was incapacitated and couldn't make decisions, did I have the right paperwork on file? Um, and... Then the other thing for me was, uh, did I, if God forbid something happens when my wife is not here, have I made the right provisions to take care of her? Uh, where are our insurance policies? So making sure she knows where all the documents are. And again, we have a safe deposit box. She knows those things. And the hospitals have them on file, so we're okay. But, you know, if you don't have those things in place, take the time when you're feeling great make those decisions, to have those tough discussions, because in the moment when it's time to, to, oh to respond, it if you don't crazy. have them, it's going to be chaotic. So um, I'm going to shut up now because that was the first piece of um, and the anxiety of being away from her under these circumstances was tough too. But that was the first part for me about what goes through my head and making sure that I've taken care of my business in a way that takes care of her. Okay, so I, to give you my perspective, uh, earlier on, um, we posted on Facebook, I said the two perspectives was one, the person that's actually sick, which is the provider, which she is the main provider, but also the caregiver. From my perspective, it is, um, from my perspective, it, I, you, you as a caregiver, I've learned that I have to be very patient, and I have to be very understanding and I need to listen because I will in the past I have let my emotions take over and it has caused more damage than any good so as a provider you have to keep a cool head you have to listen and get all the details 
and then once you get all the details, then you then you can assess the situation. So what I'm learning, I, we one one or two things that we've learned in this process, this right here, is that having, like you said, all the proper documentation in place. Prior to this marriage, I did not have life insurance. I did not have um, a process in place. If I had passed away, it would have been on the state. But one thing that I've learned and I appreciate from Lisa and being married to her is that things have to be in place. You have to prepare for it. Let's prepare for it before something happens. Like she said, if you try and um, analyze or figure out the process or what to do in the midst of it, it gets crazy. So having the documentation in place and knowing where it is is key. We have a firebox that we have in the house that has copies of everything that's under lock and key. And we also have the, PO, the um, safe, deposit. safe deposit box that's at our bank. So definitely check your banks because you can at certain banks you can get a free uh, safe deposit box because you have an account with them. So check that out too. I'm always down for free. Free 99 is the best <laughs> price for me. All that to that. But I I I do understand that just being the caregiver, you need to know all of the information where everything is because. There was a time where well, she was having a procedure done, and we just, we always, when she has a major procedure, or either one of us have a major procedure, we review it, and then we go, oh, well, there's a couple things we always end up um, revising. And so, the last time we did that, um, there was one or two words that was left out as me being um, her... Proxy, or proxy, or about medical stuff. It yeah. was about medical. Now about will, if she passes, and all that. That was very clear. But it was one or two words that wasn't clear enough for them to say that I did not have any say over her medical decisions. Make sure that all of the jargon and the words are actually on point. See a lawyer. Have them review it. Make sure there are all your eyes are dotted and your T's are crossed because it is very, very important. Yeah, I was going to say, we're not financial advisors. We're not legal advisors. Nope. We can't tell you what some of our experiences have been. So we're going to say, yeah, put yourself something together um, and then have somebody else review it to make sure that your bases are covered because you don't want to have the jargon for one state because each state can be different. Absolutely. Uh, Rashida mentioned in a Facebook, I heard her earlier in a Facebook, uh, she was going on Facebook Live and she said, you know, there are certain states who... Uh, well, the government recognizes us, right, in the United States now as being married. But there are still states, like we live in Indiana, and there are laws on the books that say <laughs> you can be fired, all kinds of things. So you never know where there's a loophole that nullifies your marriage. So that's why you need to have those documents in addition to um, your marriage. And particularly if you have children and Absolutely. you have assets and those kinds of things. There's a great movie, If Walls Could Talk. If you haven't seen it, that's exactly what uh, I'm go see if Walls could talk one and two, because for same-sex couples in particular, it takes you through and lets you see some of the horrifying things that you may have to face if the documentation is not correct. And in terms of you know regular couples, it doesn't matter. You could be together and straight uh, and married, and somebody can challenge you on the custody of your own children. Mm -hmm. Just make sure you have the stuff sewn up so that there is no problem. That those things are not far-fetched; they happen. Yes, people, grandparents have rights. People have rights these days. You have small children. They could find themselves in the middle of custody battles and things like that, and it just makes things worse. So uh, this episode really was about taking care of your business, or I, we used to say minding, minding your, your business. business. Minding your business. Mind your business. Yeah, and just making sure that your things are correct. So, um, again, hopefully this is helpful. It's not the best of circumstances, but it is an extremely important topic. So we just wanted to take a moment to uh, say, get the paperwork done. It doesn't even take that long. Uh, matter of fact, a couple of quick, quick hints. Go to Staples, Kinko's, not only about Kinko's, but Staples and office supply stores. They have those kind of pre-formatted documents that at least will give you the basics. Right. Um, the basics so that you can start filling stuff in and then take it to somebody 
um, to have it notarized. Funeral homes, banks, they notarize bank, things notarizes. like that. Hospitals won't do it on site because it's kind of a conflict of interest. So um, do what you need to do, but get something so right. that you're not in a pickle. All right? Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully this is helpful. Hopefully in the next couple of days we'll get back to some happier segments. But this is probably one of the most important segments Absolutely. we'll do. I, I completely agree. All right. God bless you. God bless. Happy New Year. And happy New Year and take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.